Hello everyone. This is Jasmine Das and welcome to my channel Unpad. We must learn with childlike emptiness. So, let's get started. In this video, we will learn how to quickly interpret various land uses in a topo sheet. Land use involves the use of land by properly utilizing the resources available in a particular area depending upon relief, climate, soil and vegetation. Under land use study of a topo sheet, we can consider residential or settlement pattern, the irrigation, occupation of the people and transport. But before that, let's see what the colors say. For studying a topographical sheet, one has to be familiar with the colors used in a topo sheet. These colors are called conventional colors as they are accepted all over the world. Yellow color is used to show all the fertile areas under cultivation. Green color is used to show all wooded, forested areas, scattered trees and scrubs. Except the prominent surveyed trees which are shown in black color. Blue color is used to show water features or water bodies that contain water. White patches in a topo sheet indicate uncultivated land. Red color is used to show grid lines both easting and northing and their numbering, roads, car track, settlements, huts and buildings. Brown color is used to show contour lines, their numbering, form lines and sand features such as sand hills and dunes. And finally, black color is used to show all the names written in a topo sheet, river banks, broken ground, dry streams, surveyed trees, heights and their numbering, railway lines, telephone and telegraph lines, lines of latitude and longitude. Let's start with the basic understanding of site and settlement. Site is the land on which the settlement, village or town is built. And a settlement is a group of human dwellings in urban or rural areas. Human dwellings may be human houses or buildings. So settlement provides much information about any place regarding the portions occupied by human habitation, the land use pattern and occupation of the people in that area. Hence, it is very important to read the topo sheet properly by knowing the correct conventional signs and symbols. Let's see an example of settlement Sirori which is well linked with a metal road, car track and it has a post office too. And the yellow wash indicates farming. So we can conclude people are involved in trade, farming and also employed in post office. Now it's time to know the factors suitable for developing a settlement. So settlement generally develop on level land where the construction is possible, fertile area where cultivation is possible, Settlements generally grow near the source of water since water is the most essential for life. Settlement develops near a mine or quarry where the main occupation of people is quarrying or mining. And sometimes they are well connected with the main route or road to facilitate the trade and growth. So this was all about the factors favoring the growth of a settlement. Now let's see the unfavorable factors. One does not find a settlement where the land is unsuitable because of lack of certain resources or due to having a bad topography which restrict the growth and development of a place and such areas would be a swampy marshy land, hilly areas where availability of level land is less and steep slopes don't encourage much construction, desert areas where the sandy soil and lack of moisture can provide water and food for the survival. And based on these factors, different settlement patterns are developed. So the first one is the nucleated pattern which develops when building or houses are constructed very close to each other in a compact manner with a post office, hospital, school, temple, etc. This is generally seen in the areas favoring the growth of settlement like near the source of water or communication such as road or railways. Next one is linear settlement. Linear settlements are developed on either side of river, road or railway which seemed like a line. They generally develop because of communication facilities which help in developing trade. So the last one is the dispersed pattern and this pattern is found in remote areas or places which don't favor much growth of settlement. 
so here the dwellings are few and scattered away from each other they are more or less isolated and population is less by considering certain factors we can easily compare the settlements with each other one town is bigger than the other based on the large size of the cluster of the permanent huts presence of an inspection bungalow annual fair post office temple or telegraph office circuit house which indicate that the town is quite developed similarly if the town is well connected or linked by metal road or car tracks with neighboring towns it shows that the town is economically well developed now let's see the irrigation irrigation is a supply or artificial means of providing water at needed intervals to boost the crop growth and in the topo sheet perennial sources of water is indicated by blue color with different symbols and provision of the means of irrigation in any area is dependent on the relief or physical features of that area along with the land use pattern for example in the hilly region there is no cultivation possible hence there is no need for irrigation on the flat lands which are colored yellow one can see blue round spots which represent perennial lined wells therefore one can say that the main source of irrigation in such areas are wells and the occupation of people is farming perennial river the presence of artificial man made canals ponds lakes with embankment are other means of irrigation and it shows that the water is being stored for off season presence of dry streams dry ponds with uncultivable lands shown in white patches indicate that the rainfall in the area is scanty now let's discuss vegetation and the different symbols associated with it vegetation refers to all those trees and plants which grow naturally without human aid and has been left undisturbed by humans for a long time a study regarding the types of vegetation provides possible clues about climate soil and occupation of the people The presence of grass on a map may indicate pasture land which may be found in regions where the rainfall is not sufficient to support trees. Open scrub is indicative of scanty rain, desert or semi-desert conditions. Palm is a characteristic of desert and coastal soil and conifers are found at the height of 1600 meter or more. Bamboo is a kind of grass found in regions of moderate to scanty rainfall. On the map it is shown by the word bamboo. Deciduous forest is the most widespread vegetation of India. In case of scattered vegetation on the map, the distribution of trees and shrub is widely spaced, which indicate the region of moderate to scanty rainfall. Rock outcrop means the piece of rock juts out of the main rock, along with open scrub with scanty desert type vegetation. On the map, it is denoted by the word rock outcrop. dense forest it indicates a region of heavy rainfall on the map it is shown by the word dense jungle an open jungle is indicative of moderate rainfall prominent survey trees are shown in black and have numbers on their trunk they serve as landmarks and are not allowed to be cut reserved forest is an area in the forest where the trees are not allowed to be cut protected forests are planted as shelter belt to act as a barrier against wind and running water to prevent soil erosion and to prevent shifting of sand dunes in the desert area deciduous forest is the most widespread vegetation of india they are mostly found on higher grounds green is a color which is used to show the forest dense forest or jungle written on the map indicates a region of heavy rainfall whereas an open jungle is indicative of moderate rainfall scattered scrubland and stony waste would indicate desert conditions with poor soil such an infertile area would only suitable for rearing goats sheep camels and horses a good reading of conventional signs and symbols apart from interpreting the informations provided by a settlement can tell a lot about the people's occupation of an area so let's see the occupation yellow color indicates cultivable land So a plain in yellow wash with wells shows that people are engaged in farming. The mountainous region in green show dense forest and here the occupation of the people may be lumbering or forestry. Areas indicating grasslands, meadows, pastures, open scrub, presence of road in highlands show that the occupation of the people may be cattle rearing or sheep rearing. Presence of stony waste quarries limestone beds shows that people may be working in mines for their living. 
Existence of communication links like road, canal under construction indicates that the people may be working at the construction site and dense settlement near road indicates that trade too would be an occupation. Presence of perennial sources of water like river indicates fishing as an occupation apart from farming. Presence of hotels, motels, inns and dhabas indicate that people are also engaged in tourism industry. And finally, the conventional signs like IB for inspection bungalow, PO for post office, PTO for post telegraph office, railways, police stations, etc. shows that people are also engaged in government or public services. Now, it's time to discuss transport. Transport is a system or means of conveying people or goods from one place to another. The means of transport always depend on the type of relief and drainage. This is the symbol used to show the metal road. So metal road or pakka road indicates a developed region. On the map it is shown by red parallel lines. On metal road or kacha road indicative of undeveloped regions and on a map it is shown by a pair of red broken parallel lines. Backtrack is a path which is made when man and animal use the region to travel. On a map it is shown by a single red broken line. Cart track is a path broader than the pack track made by bullock or horse cart. On a map it is shown by a single red line. Foot path is a path paid by man usually in a very steep regions. On a map it is shown by a single line or dots. Causeway is a raised metal road across a minor stream or low-lying marshy area. Presence of many causeways shows that the area gets seasonal or scanty rainfall. This symbol is for railway line with station. On a map, this indicates an area of human settlement. Right reading gives right information. So, that's all for this video. Now it's time to leave. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, like and subscribe my channel as a token of motivation. See you in the next video. Till then, stay happy, stay healthy and keep learning.